Welcome back, everyone, for this week's Bullshit Hour, episode 35. It's Dan and Tyler here today. How you doing, Tyler? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, just uh, straight up chilling. Kind of missing bass, uh, but I'm sure he's having a hell of a party over there, wherever the hell he's at. He's drinking a lot of beer from the photos I've seen, so I'm kind of jealous, too. <laughs> As I sit here sipping on a beer myself. But don't worry, um, we actually got a, we got two segments today, one with me and Dan and one with Bass uh, in the second half of this. So y'all, y'all, won't, y'all won't miss this beautiful voice for very long. So Yeah, we're doing a little time traveling today to get this going <laughs> for you. <ya. laughs> uh, you got any news, Chief? Yeah, so um, I think we mentioned this on the rundown, but we'll mention it here too because not everybody watches the rundown. Or listens to the rundown. But Bleach Thousand Year Blood War Part 3 will return in 2024. It's already been confirmed. Um, we, we're not sure on exact dates. Uh, I would probably shoot for a summer appearance, honestly. But Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited for that. I was I was really figuring spring. Like, they've been doing good about, like... You think so? Yeah, because we got spring Three seasons off. Time, then we got... Oh, no, we had winter and then summer. So, yeah, it's okay. been like every other season, you know? That, I mean, I would be down for that, but you never know. Oh, 100%, dude. And also, uh, so AOT announced that they're going to release a 18-page manga title, a brand new one, AOT Volume 35, with an upcoming art book in April. Yeah. So... I guess AOT is not done yet. I wonder what they. Well, I wonder what they're going to get into because they finished the story in it. Like it, it's case closed, you know. Well, I mean, it's case closed as we thought, but apparently not. <laughs> uh, I mean, it could be. It could be like an uh, after kind of thing. It could be like a side story. But I mean, if it's AOT Volume Thirty Five, I'm not sure what the volume is now. Probably Thirty Four. Now, maybe. But if it's 35, that means it's continuing the story. So I don't know when. And just be interested to see where it goes. And uh, also have some really exciting news that I'm excited for. So if you guys grew up watching Toonami like a bunch of us did, Ultimate Muscle is coming back next year. So if you guys don't remember, this show is like Justice League meets WWE. It's like an intergalactic group of pro wrestlers who fight to save the world. And it is ridiculous. And I'm, it's going to be done by production IG. And I'm excited to not see it be done by four kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I never did really watch this as a kid. But, you know, um, I've seen um, the dude so many times. I don't know who it is. I'm assuming it's Ultimate Muscle. Maybe that's his name. It's, it's Kid sure. Muscle, yeah. The Kid Muscle. Uh, but he's so unforgettable because just because of his lips, I guess. Um, <laughs> his character, <laughs> dude, all the character designs in this show are nuts. But like, um, it, it was a riot. So maybe, maybe I'll check this one out since it's done by Production IG. You know, everybody knows I'm a pretty big fan of Production IG with Hot and stuff like that. So definitely, man. I'll at least watch a few episodes of it just to see if it's got the same nostalgia feeling for me. You know. Yeah. Um, also, uh, Laura Croft, any big Laura Croft fans? Because we're getting an anime by Netflix. Um, they're, they're diving into the anime game and, uh, it's going to be coming out in 2024 sometime. So, um, that's going to be pretty interesting. I, I feel like that's a super interesting, uh, I guess, anime, uh, you know, to try out, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like that'll be a good show to introduce people who don't watch anime to anime because, I mean, if you grew up in like the late 90s, you played the Laura Croft video games. Everybody remembers her sprite from the PlayStation 1. How can you not? (laughs) And the movies are really popular, too. So I'd be interested to see if that kind of brings some people into watching anime for the first time. And even the video games, honestly, I had a lot of fun playing the video games. So um. how can you forget those? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Super pointy polygon knockers, dude. Well, not not even back in the day, you know. Even oh, okay. the more, more recent ones, you know. Uh, even though I did pl- play those back in the day, uh, <laughs> but the the more recent ones was really uh, beautiful too. So, 
<laughs> Good use of the word beautiful there. Uh, we also got uh, so the Scott Pilgrim Scott Pilgrim anime is going to drop on November seventeenth. This is also done by Netflix, and they just released another trailer. And I'm not going to lie, it kind of deflated it for me a little bit. Like it doesn't look like an anime. It looks like one of those like new gen Cartoon Network shows, like the Teen Titans Go or one of those. And I kind of lost some of the feel for it. But if the story is good, you know, I'll definitely still watch it. I love the Scott Pilgrim movie, so. Yeah, it kind of, it kind of like looked flat, flat and maybe like, I don't know. Did, did we even see any like movement in the trailer? I feel like we didn't. Yeah, we did. I mean, there was a lot of him sitting there at the door waiting, but um, it just didn't feel like an anime. Yeah, it looks it looks really weird. The like the the I guess the facial expressions are done. I don't know. They're just doing it weird. Y'all should go check it out. Uh, if I remember, I'll try to put it in Discord, uh, the general chat or whatever for Discord. That way, everybody can see what we're talking about. So definitely. And the last little bit of news we have, which I'm very excited for, is allegedly Hunter x Hunter is going to make its long-awaited return to the manga. So I'm really excited for that. Togashi put out a tweet that he was drawing, and what else is he going to be working on? So I'm really excited for that. I really hope Hunter x Hunter can get back on its legs and get rolling and finish off some of these arcs and actually have an ending. So, Or maybe, you know, he writes a couple chapters and and takes another hiatus. We'll never know. Hey, man, health issues are tough. And yeah. he's put out a lot of work in his life. I mean, he did Yu Yu Hakusho and Hunter Hunter. So, dude's a legend. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, but I believe that's about all we got for news, right? Yeah, it was, it was a very news-heavy week compared to what we've had in the last few. So, But let's get right into our first topic. So... We're just going to do a little summer report and, uh, you know, what we've been watching this summer outside of the rundown. And we are going to start with we noticed that we forgot to give the latest arc of Bleach a rating. So <laughs> we're going to start that now. Uh, Tyler, what you got? Sorry for the rundown, folks. Um, uh, we try not to let it happen, but, you know, it was a, it was a pretty uh, heavy uh, banger of an episode. So, uh, yeah, but... I, I really enjoyed this one. Um, I think that it was uh, it was pretty much better than the first part. I think, um, because it was a lot more action, a lot more fighting. We got to see, obviously, uh, Kenny come back and stuff like that. We got to see some great faces come back, even though Yamamoto like went hard in the first half. Um, it's still like a high nine, a high eight, low nine for me. Um. So, uh, what about you? Yeah, I think I'm going to give it actually a slightly lower rating in my mental headspace compared to the first season. Uh, that Yamamoto fight, that Genryu Sai fight, just sticks out to me. Yeah, and I think it, that's the best fight we've gotten so far in Thousand Year Blood War. So I'm going to give it, like, I think I gave, like, the first season a 9 or, like, an 8.8 eight or an 8.9. So I'm probably going to give this, like, an 8.5, eight, 8.6. Eight, but, you know, it was really good and there was some serious boxing. But I felt like the story just kind of didn't flow as well due to the amount of jumping around it did. And I thought like the first arc kind of progressed at a better. I don't want to say pace because pacing's really good either way, but like I just it the story flowed better. So I can see that. Um that that is one of my complaints is that it does jump around a lot. Um but Yamamoto's fight, it was I think one of the best of Thousand Year Blood War. The only reason why I put it, you know, about the same or a little bit above is because I got to see, you know, a couple of my favorite characters come back, um, which I really loved. And the third part, you know, I think it's going to be even better. Honestly, we're getting into the what what Dan loves to say, meat and potatoes. So. Yeah. Yeah, we're starting to see some really big fights come center stage, and Ichigo will actually be back on the dance floor now. That's another thing I didn't really like about this season, is it didn't really focus on Ichigo at all. He was just training the entire time, and then sitting in a giant dick-shaped rocket. So, like, <laughs> it's weird when you have an entire arc where your main character is a side character, if that makes sense. But it's also, it's also a, 
a really crazy thing that um, even though Ichigo was on the sidelines, he's like, it still was a great show. You know what I mean? Because Bleach is like that. They got so many great side characters that can take the spotlight and give exactly. Ichigo a break. So, yeah, it's funny. I think like if they like, so they've been doing like five chapters an episode, which is like God tier pacing for an anime. And honestly, I think if they slowed it down a bit, and ha- did like three, so we weren't watching like four different fights in episode, and we were really watching like one or two. I think it would have it would have flowed a little better, in my opinion. You know, I, I feel that. Either way, I guess I guess uh, I don't know how much more we got. Uh, I think would you say this last part? I mean, this next part is might be the last part. No, there's four total. Okay, four. Okay, I got you. Alrighty. Yep, and the next part's gonna be called the conflict. So more boxing. <laughs> I mean, that's basically all it is, I guess. And then I guess the fourth part is maybe the after, like the the end, the finale, you know, uh, all that good stuff. So definitely. Well, do you want to get into your first show that you uh, finished up this summer? Yeah. So uh, I guess I'll go ahead and start with uh, Reborn as a vending machine. Now I wonder the dungeons. Uh, we done this as a. Uh, First look, I don't know when it's been probably a month or two, maybe I think first around July, right? Uh, yeah, it was. We watched this three weeks into summer, so I'd say like mid July. Yeah. Um, so it's it's sitting on Mal about a 6.57, which is about right in my mind. Um, it's made, it's made by Studio Gokumi. Um, they really haven't done a whole lot. Uh, it, the ones that they've done, the animated that they've done, I really don't know. So, uh, it's 12 episodes. It just, like we said, it just got released in summer. Uh, it's basically a vending machine. Enthusiast dies and gets reincarnated as a vending machine. And Boxo is his name, and he's found by Lamas. And they basically just go on adventures uh, around the dungeons that uh, they inhabit. Uh, but it's just a funny... Over the top isekai, nice for like the background uh, noise, uh, especially before bed. The dubbed is okay. There's only a, a little bit of complaints with the dubbed. Subbed is way better. But yeah, I would give it probably around a six or so. Um, probably a low six, honestly. So awesome. I. I I know Dan hated it, but I, I didn't hate it. I just thought it was really <laughs> stupid, <laughs> really stupid, like not enough. Like it was funny in parts, but it was like it wasn't enough for me to go. OK, I'm going to watch this every week. Like I might wait till I now that it's done. It might be a show when I'm kind of. In a lull, looking for something dumb to watch, you know, maybe I've had a few beers and I'm just staying up at night. Maybe I'll throw it on, you know, but it wasn't something I was going to go. Oh, my God vending machine came out i gotta watch this <laughs> so yeah that's what i did uh i actually waited till like i watched like four or five episodes i think around the time we did the uh first look and then i basically just left it alone and waited till it to finish and um then i watched it all at once because i enjoy it like i said it, it knows what it is it knows it's not a great show it knows that it's there it knows it's semi-trash it's mid you know at best uh but it knows it so that's the difference (laughs) it's always good when a show knows what they are and i've got a show coming up that i'll talk about that's actually i don't have a lot on my what i've been watching list because i am watching a saga right now and we'll get into that one in a little bit but the first show that i'm going to talk about is one that i have finished Many times, it is one of my favorite anime of all time, and that is Gurren Lagann. You guys have heard me talk about this a few times, trying to get Tyler to watch it, <laughs> because you absolutely have to watch this show. Uh, so this show is done by Gainax. Uh, it's an anime studio that actually the person who led the team for Gurren Lagann went on to create Studio Trigger, which is one of my favorite uh, anime studios there is. And I've got another Studio Trigger show on this list I'm actually watching it right now. Um, I probably rewatch this like once a year. It's it's just <laughs> so good. And like it's 26 episodes or something like that. 
with uh, a, a recap episode in the middle. So like it's it's a quick watch. I think I watched it in like a week. And it's an absolute banger. Like I've said, I've mentioned it like three or four times. I'm just trying to get tired to watch it. And now that he's done with a couple of shows, you know, I think he's got to put it on his list. It's it's quick. Yeah, I, I did get done with uh, a few of the shows that was eating me up. So um, now I got some extra spots open. So Dude, we'll see what's up. You just you got to understand the feeling of spiral power and having the drill that can pierce the heavens. Oh, no. And the strongest, I'm going to put, like, Gurren Lagan has potentially the strongest anime character of all time. It's up there. Like, multiverse power levels. Mm. What if What if we made a deal? Okay. What if we made a deal? Okay, talk to what? me. Is this, is this kind of like what you and Bass did? Yeah, yeah, something like that. So what if you got me to watch a Mecca show, which we all know that I'm not a big fan of Mechas, you know? And what if you watched a show that I picked? What show I'm not going to tell you which show it is until you say yes or no. Um, do I have to finish it or do like, I just have to watch a few episodes. Cause like, if you give me some like 75 to a hundred episode, like slice of life show, <laughs> no. I would be livid. And honestly, if it's an isekai, I'm cool with that. Like I can, I enjoy isekais, but girl oh. Laga doesn't feel like a mecha anime. It doesn't have that Gundam feel that even Galeon feel where it's like serious and like there's politics and shit like that. This is just a ragtag group of people who steal mechas and basically go on a rampage to take down the man. <laughs> no, uh, what I'm thinking is maybe, you know, at least, uh, you know, two to two, three, five episodes, something like that. Get our feel for it. See if we want to keep on watching it or not, you know, because uh, yeah, I'm not sure it. if I'll be able to watch. Like, I don't know. It, it depends. I watched uh, Iron Blood Orphans, Iron Blood Orphans, and that wasn't too bad. It was just the the all the politics and stuff got lost on me, honestly, um, and stuff like that. So, yeah, this is this honestly has more of a shonen feel to it than like the classic mecha show. So I think you'd, you'd enjoy it, no problem. But um, yeah, I'm down for that. What do you have in mind? That's what I need to know. <laughs> well, um, it's funny that you a- asked. And um, it'll be the next show I'm talking about. It's Rent a Girlfriend. Oh, God. This is like, <laughs> this is this is the bullshit that's coming in right here. Because, like, I'm recommending him a show that's pure heat. <laughs> and he just picked, like, the trashiest of trash. Listen, like, it, is, it is so trash. It is so <laughs> mid and trash that it's good. Is there a drinking game I can play while watching this? Like, can we hang out in Discord and we can watch it and I will drink beers and get annihilated? Because that is probably the only way I can enjoy this show. You know, I can probably make one, honestly. <laughs> there's there's so many repeating uh, repeating incidents that I can make one, so. Well, guys, let us know in the Discord if you want to do a rent-a-girlfriend drinking game night because that might be what has to happen here. <laughs> Every time, every time, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Kazuhara uh, or Kaz- Kazuya, uh, says Mizuhara's name or any or thinks about her <laughs> at all, we drink. So. <laughs> Is this gonna be like one of those? Have you seen those like TikToks where it's like, all right, for today's drinking game, you're gonna watch Dragon Ball and you're gonna drink the entire time they scream, and then it just has the guy like pass <laughs> out with a bottle of vodka next to him. No, I don't think it's that bad, but um, you know, you always said that uh, you would like some um more adult uh like rom coms, and this is about as adult as you're gonna get. Uh, there, I, I mean, these people are in college, you know. Uh, so I'm uh, just gonna feel so bad for the MC because he's got zero riz, he can't pull any bitches, and he's just giving them his money. Yeah, well, I mean. To be fair, though, this dude had a hot chick girlfriend, um, you know, in the beginning. And then he gets dumped or he dumps her. I forget. And it's in in order to like um, 
replace that, I guess, in order to feel better. He and you, you know, rental girlfriends are like pretty popular over in Japan. Did you know that? I do. It's really weird in my opinion, but I'll let it ride. Yeah, and so he basically, um, in order for, I think, in order, it was some dude at grandma's. Um, he went to show his grandma that he was doing okay, blah, blah. And he took her with her as a date or whatever to show his grandma that he, he was okay or whatever. And he was turning out okay, blah, blah, blah. And then her grandma was there and then it just became a mess because they had, they was, they was a couple, but they wasn't. But then they couldn't break apart from that lie because then it would break their hearts because they was about dead. And uh, it just, it just a lot of unfortunate uh, circumstances follows. But um, I really don't expect you to watch all of it. But I do, I, I would like to see you watch some of it because I feel like you would at least laugh at some of it. So it might be out of, like the things that I will laugh in this are like, sh- like, What's that word like secondhand embarrassment? I feel like oh, is what I'm gonna laugh at here. Like I'm man. gonna feel so bad for this guy. It's funny. <laughs> it is, it's man. It, 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 he has a way of embarrassing embarrassing himself every single time he shows up. So, um, I feel wow. like I feel like you'll kind of enjoy this because, like I said, it's. It's so trash that you can't. It's hard to look away from it. Like this, it's just so funny. Okay, so here's my last question: If I'm watching this right and my wife gets home, this isn't going to be like uh, Afro Samurai where I'm running around looking for a remote because there is a very graphic scene going on. No, um, okay, I mean I think they might say. I think we hear like a lot of inner uh, dialogue and. Um, well, that's uh, fine. That's fine. There's just not yeah. blinking titties out on the screen no. with somebody getting dogged. No. Uh, Kazuya, um, he or whatever the hell his name is, I I forget his name, man. Um, uh, he he's a dumbass. But anyways, his his inner thought process is pretty, especially early on. It's pretty perverted sometimes. Like it's a normal college guy, you know, is horny so. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> well, I feel like we got into your next show pretty good. Uh, do you have anything else to say on it? Or uh, yeah. So, um, speaking of uh, like the ratings. Uh, oh, I didn't see, I think... log on. Uh, ten yeah, out of 10, 10, 10 out of ten. Best show in the world. No, I'm just kidding. It's like a nine. Yeah. Okay, nine. Okay, it's a nine. Um, Honestly, the third season of Rent a Girlfriend, I would give like a high six, low seven. It's it's still more the same. Um, uh, it's still more the same. It's 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 funny. I enjoy it. Um, it's not one of those things that I watch weekly, honestly. But um, uh, it, it's just it's just really good to watch. So, awesome. I, I think. Well, since you've got more shows than me, do you actually want to go into one of yours now? Or what do you want to do? Do you want me to do one of mine next? I just want to make yeah. you rattle off like three shows in a row at the end, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'll go into another trash uh, anime um, of this season. And it's Mushiko Tensei. And season two, the Mal is sitting at about 8.37. I don't know how. Um, I guess it's the uh, Mushiko Tensei stands. I don't know. Which I was a big stand on the first season, um, but this second season is was pretty rough. Not gonna lie, but it's done by Studio Bind. They haven't really done a whole lot else um, as well. Uh, it's basically just your standard isekai guy dies and gets reborn into a magical fantasy world and decides to try to live his best life. Uh, this was the first cower of the second season, and uh, it was a major step back in my opinion. Um, I would give it around a mid six, maybe a lower six. I mean, Rent a Girlfriend got higher. In my mind, Rent a Girlfriend's higher than this this season. Um, I'm hoping the second part's much better now that we've gotten past the uh, the problems. Um, the Mushiko Tensei uh, people knows what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> I know yeah. what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, the um, the little problems and. I mean, there's just a couple, like, 
this whole first half of the season, it focused on like two things. And I felt like it could have been, at least one of them could have been resolved way faster. And the other one shouldn't have been as big of a deal as it was. So, but yeah, um, that's my thoughts on Mushiko Tensei. Like I said, I got I got the first season. It's like a high eight, low nine, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But this is this is around six for me. So, damn, that's a big drop off. I mean, yeah. like I know you were hyping this up a lot at the beginning of the summer, and we made the executive decision to not watch it on the rundown because <laughs> Bass was not uh, a fan of the premise. I'm so glad, bro. We. That this would have been so bad to talk about every week because not a lot happened, honestly. Um, and what did happen was was honestly just just it, it's something that you would see in Mushiku Tensei only. So, gotcha. The best way to put it. Gotcha. So the next show is one that I'm going to talk about. Is one I actually just started. Um, so the first episode dropped on October second. This is one of the shows that I brought up when we were doing our um, shows we're excited about for the fall, and it's another, none other than MF Ghost. So the first episode dropped on October 2nd. It's done by Felix Film. This is the spiritual successor to probably the greatest car racing anime of all time, Initial D. So if you guys don't know Initial D, it came out in like the late 90s. It's mostly known for its soundtrack. It got memed a shit ton on TikTok. If you ever heard the song Deja Vu or Don't Stop the Music with just banging techno music, the old Eurobeat, that's what we're talking about here. <laughs> so the show follows a 19-year-old Japanese-British racer. His name is... Oh my god, I didn't put his name in the notes. Kanata. Sorry, Kanata. I'm like, wait. Yeah, it's Kanata. <laughs> there we go. In the racing circuit called MFG, that's that's where right where the title comes from. He's looking for his father, Ken Katagiri. That's why he came back to Japan. And the most hype part, and for me in this show, is that Kanata was trained to race by the legendary Takafumi Fujiwara, who is the main character from Initial D. So I don't know if they're going to bring him back into the story. I have not touched this manga at all. But the premise seems really good. Uh, the animation kind of has that initial D feel to it. So I love that. Like you kind of watch it in today's eyes and you're like, this is kind of weird. Like the eyelashes and stuff are really pronounced. But that's how initial D was. So um, there's already some romantic sparks going on. Episode one. So that might get Tyler to watch it. We got to go <laughs> crushing on our boy already. And the episode ended with Kanata about to start his first race. And they had Eurobeat popping. They had some fucking banging tunes going on. So I was a big fan of this. I'm excited to see where it goes. And after watching this, I actually went back and watched the first episode of Initial D. And <laughs> I'm excited to see this in a new generation of animation because Initial D, like when you go back and watch it in, you know, 2023, it is tough on the eyes. The cars look very like late 90s CGI. So like it's, it's, the story is so good, but it's tough to watch through today's like class, you know? Yeah, I've thought about watching, going back and watching Initial D because so many people hop it up, you know, but um, I've watched like a little bit of it um, and I was like, I don't know, man, I just ain't feeling this today. So, and I'm usually not the one that like puts down shows just because they look like shit, you know, especially older shows. Um, but I don't know, it's just, is car car racing like in watching cars race and stuff isn't really my thing anyways so uh so it was just kind of hard for me to watch that's that's why when you said uh it, it shows some romantic things going on in the first episode i was like that's that's probably just bait that's probably just <laughs> baiting people to stick around we all know that there's not really gonna be any romance going on in this show Nah, dude, there's going to be a little spark. I'm telling you, there's going to be some tension between some characters over this girl. Like, it's going to be good. Oh, they were. <laughs> okay. They ra instead of racing for pink slips, they're racing for hearts. Huh? For, for MFG angels. Okay. Okay. But yeah, maybe, no. Maybe I'll check the, it out. 
in the first episode, you find out that the number nine ranked racer who drives a Nissan GTR Nismo is madly in love with this chick. He's like got a huge crush on her. Doesn't know who she is at all. Like he shows up to a race just to pull out his little spy glass and go, damn, Shorty, you looking good today. <laughs> but she's falling in love with Kanata, the main character. So like we're going to get some trap. We're going to get some tension there. And I'm excited for that. Oh, already. Okay. But like the best part is for me is I'm a huge fan of Japanese cars. Like I have a Subaru STI. And instead of bringing back like the old AE86 that they drove in uh, initial D, Kanata is driving a GT86, which is like the spiritual successor to that car. So, like, they're bringing all this nostalgia right into it at the forefront, man. So, uh, as far as like uh, uh, graphically, like animation wise, uh, does it look pretty decent? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, the car racing looked really clean uh, from what I saw. Again, the only thing that kind of looks weird in today's world is kind of the character designs, but they're just drawing them faithful to the manga so like you can't really blame the studio for that yeah yeah all right that's uh, maybe maybe i'll check it out it, it's probably not something that um i watch weekly but maybe after it's done um since you're gonna check it out you can let me know how it is and we'll see about watching it all before uh we do our uh fall our fall uh report or whatever so Definitely, yeah. I got a few more shows from the fall I want to check out. There is um, the Firefighter show. I want to check that out. And I can't remember what the third show I had on that episode was. Uh, it was, wasn't it Pluto? No, Bass had Pluto. I want to check Pluto out, too. That looks really cool. Okay. It might have been Undead Unlock, honestly. Yeah, it was. It was Undead Unlock, so. Yeah, I remember now. All right. Um, I guess I'll get into my next one. Um, it's my happy marriage. Um, I know Dan's heard me talk about this a few times uh, this season, and it's setting on um, out to seven point nine four. Uh, it is a Netflix show, twelve episodes, made by uh, Kinema Citrus, and that's a, a studio that did Made in Abyss, Shield Hero. And Star Wars Visions, actually. Ooh. Um, yeah. Well, there were like 20 studios who did start Star Wars Visions, so. But it was one of them, so, yeah, apparently. I, was, I, was, <laughs> I know Trigger did a Star Wars Visions episode, and that shit was heat. Oh, they was, they was mixing up the episodes or whatever? Yeah, so how Star Wars Visions worked is basically they had each anime studio create their own, like, 20, 30-minute, whatever, Star Wars story. Oh, okay. And animate it. That's so, like, interesting. There was one that was like really Disney y, and it might have actually been done by Disney. It was really cool, like how they did the storytelling in it. If you haven't checked it out, definitely recommend it. Especially if you, if you like Star Wars and anime, you'll be in your bag for two seasons. Okay, okay. And there's no story between them. So, like, you don't have to worry about like following a plot. So, like, you just throw an episode on and you go, oh, that was cool or that was dumb, you know? <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm. Kinema is citrus and uh, season two is confirmed already. Uh, but basically this uh, gets a summary of it. Basically a supernatural romance drama with the main character living in an abusive household. She gets married off to the heir of another family and starts to slowly heal. Um, I would say this is like a wholesome uh, romance drama type thing but it's really not i mean there's there's a lot of wholesome moments in it but um the fact that there's a lot of abusive um like mental abuse um going on uh which i think it does pretty well um it shows it pretty well and it shows like the after effects the trauma and stuff pretty well too um it's just a pretty good show. Um, I would give it like a high seven, honestly, um, which is close to what Mal has it at. Um, but definitely pretty good. If you like romance, like supernatural uh, shows that could have potential to have some fighting going on in it, like supernatural fighting um, mixed in with like romance dramas, then this is a show you should watch. Netflix done a really good job. It's probably one of the better romances of the season. So. Awesome. 
So I guess the next show I have on my list is SSSS Dyna Xenon, which is the sequel to Gridman. Uh, this was released in 2021. It's got 12 episodes. I think I'm through four and a half or five of them. And it's done by Studio Trigger. So like, this is the follow-up to Gridman. It's part of the Gridman universe. So they're building this out. Um, if you were a fan of like Power Rangers and like having like multiple mechas combine into a giant mecha to fight like giant monsters, this series, this like universe is definitely something you want to check out. It's based on the 1993, 1994 to Tokusatsu drama Gridman the Hyper Agent, which was basically like Japanese Power Rangers. Okay. You got kids piloting them. Um, they're fighting giant monsters that are controlled by another team of kids who transported like 5,000 years in the future. Like the fights have been really fun. The animation's really crispy and it's been good so far. I think I liked the story of Gridman a lot more overall so far, but I just have to see where it goes. I mean, it's only 12 episodes, so I'll definitely finish it off, but, um, they bring in some awesome soundtracks with it too. So definitely something if you're into that. Like if you grew up watching Power Rangers, definitely check out the Gridman universe. It's been a lot of fun so far. I mean, it's it's, it's kind of like a mecha, so there's no way you're not gonna like it. So <laughs> ah, I mean, I I, I I I watch anime for plot, not just robots. You know, like I like the reason I like mecha anime so much is I love the political strife. I love the drama you get in like Gundam. You know. What Dan is trying to say, usually, um, uh, you know, on a scale of shows, eight, ten, eight points goes to it being a mecca, and then the rest of the two points goes to if the plot's good or not. No, I've watched some trash mecha <laughs> animes. I've I've watched some really oh, bad ones. Well, uh, this might end up on that list. I'm not sure yet. Like, what the was robot, that one? What was a I, trash mecha that I've watched? Yeah, Alice Gears Aegis. Well, that's that's not a mecha. That is magical girls who turn into <laughs> robots. That was weird. That was a mecha almost. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's been some installments in the Gundam series that I haven't liked as much as other ones, you know, like um, okay. some of the sequels, things like that. Like this one just didn't hit as hard. Um, I think, you know, like. Witch from Mercury is probably that's not a banger in any means by my eyes. Like, it was good. But it just didn't have the things I like about Gundam. And that's, you know, the political strife, Earth versus Spatians, or the colonies, whatever you want to call them. And it left a lot of that out. So you didn't get the Gundam feel from it, you know? Well, I mean, if if uh, multiple people was recommending it to me um, to watch, then it probably wasn't a very good mecha anime in general. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, no, it was good. I mean, I think you would like it because it's focused on, like, high schoolers. Not... Yeah. Well, it's always high schoolers or something in Gundam, but usually they're fighting giant wars, not doing, like, duels at their freaking campus and shit, you know? <laughs> I feel that. Well, I, I'm still aiming to check that out one day. Um, Some about romance and stuff, so... Yeah, and Dyna Xenon has a little bit of that, too. I mean, like, the main character is crushing pretty hard on the female the female lead right now. So it'd be interesting to see where that goes. Um, I think the next episode is a beach episode based on what I've seen on the little screen you see on Crunchyroll. So that could be cool. <laughs> but the characters don't look like normal anime characters. They're not, uh, they're not as gifted in the things that, you know, make a beach episode. Great. <laughs> <laughs> we all love a beach episode, no matter what though. So definitely. Um, I guess I'll get into the last one that I finished. And um that is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Um cool. so yeah. Me Finally. and Bass actually made a deal like a way long time ago. Uh he watched Mob Psycho and I watched Full Metal Alchemist or whatever. And uh at least ten episodes I think it was. And um I think he finished a long time ago, but I think he had a lot less episodes to watch too, so Yeah, well, about half. Yeah. So um but yeah, Full Metal Alchemist is like a nine point one on Mal. As we all know, it's number one. Um it's been number one. Uh it stays number one, so it's the goat. <laughs> no matter what, I mean, it stays number one. So I think we actually seen Freer went 
free ran Ra ran whatever whatever you want to say it's, actually it's try to give it a run for its money for a minute and it just it just didn't hold up so very long well dude the the fma boys come in pretty strong when stuff gets above <laughs> it <laughs> like i i don't i don't I don't understand. It's always fun to watch when a show gets close to it or passes it because it never stays that way, you know? Nobody ever stays above uh, Full Metal. Um, but as everyone knows, it's uh, done by Studio Bones, um, Mob Psycho, My, My Hero, and a lot more. Bones is a pretty popular uh, studio. Um, it's 64 episodes. I don't think there's any filler in it, honestly. Uh, but it uh, was in 2009. It's an action drama shonen. Uh, basically just two brothers trying their hardest to obtain their goals while fighting for their country is the about the shortest way I can summarize it. So would you say that's pretty accurate? Yeah. I mean, the whole point is trying to get their bodies back. Yeah. So I guess that's their goal. And they get kind of pulled into this crazy, crazy, crazy... Pl- not... not- <laughs> war essentially you know yeah. like and uh lots of action um a lot of twists and turns uh that make is such a great story uh the dubbed is actually phenomenal as well um i know that uh i think i complained about uh al's voice a few times but i i grow to i grow to understand it and even even at the at the end you know um no spoilers, of course, but at the end, it, his voice is a little bit different, and it made you, I guess, understand why even more why his voice was the way it was. Uh, it, it was a little less metallic sounding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> a little bit less echoey. So, um, but yeah, um, overall, uh, this took me a little while to watch. Um, I think it was like probably at least two to three months i would say uh but it's definitely like a solid nine for me um i think it would have been even better if i was able to watch this in like the span of a week or maybe a week and a half two weeks um but due to other things happening the podcast all that stuff you know it took me longer and so you know i think it could have been closer to 10 if i was able to watch it all together pretty in a pretty faster pace, you know what I mean? So it's made it into your top ten, it sounds like. I, I think it's I think it's up there. I mean, I don't really have a like an ideal top like ten. Call it ideal of my top ten, but I think I think it would be up there, honestly. Um I mean it, it's just it's just a really solid show. Uh and not that long either. It's only like sixty some episodes, sixty four I said. Um so definitely worth checking out, especially if you like the uh, story. Um, like it's got a lot of drama. It's got a lot of story. That's basically all it is: a story with uh, really good fight scenes. So a lot of comedy too, honestly. Yeah, it does a great job of balancing, you know, your action with your your drama, as well as like funneling in good comedy throughout the show. Um, you know, this is this is my number one at this point. Um, <laughs> of course, waiting on One Piece to end, but this is I've watched this show probably five or six times now, and I always end up watching it like a week or two, like Tyler was saying, and it still holds up. It's such a good show. Um, if you're living under a rock and you haven't watched Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood yet, like you got to watch it. I mean, it's the number one show in Mall for a reason, and that reason is because their fanboys are crazy. <laughs> but it is that good um it is definitely one of the best anime you can watch like this is a show that i think if you don't like anime this is a show you could really enjoy you know it doesn't have the tropiness it doesn't have any of that it's not like it doesn't have like weird perverted things randomly it's just a good ass show yeah and um the the fact that so if anybody's watched like JJK, you know how they do like their little uh, comedy sections where their faces turn off funny and stuff. Well, um, uh, Full Metal does something like that too. When whenever they do like a com- comedi- uh, comedic scene, um, like they they do like a funnier version, 
uh, avatar of themselves, kind of, I guess you can call it, which makes it even funnier. Uh, um, I think JJK is the one that stands out the most that does that quite often. Uh, so definitely. Yeah. I think with full metal alchemist too, like the reason it's so good for so many people is just like, you can relate to the characters and like really feel their emotions compared to like your standard shonens where it's just some scrappy young kid screaming dot to bio or I'm going to be <laughs> the wizard king the entire time, you know, God. not just in those shows, but like, it just feels more real, you know, Naruto's not even in the same league as Asta and, you know, and not even close. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta go back and watch OG Naruto, dude. It's fucking he's he's the first like 30 episodes. You're Dante Payo like 75 times. Well, you know, you can hear that. I mean, it takes like a like not even a second to, you know, say that and acknowledge it. But when they're yelling for five seconds, I'm gonna be Wizard King, you know. And then and then, then Yudo comes back and no, I'm gonna be Wizard King. No, I'm gonna be Wizard King. It, it's like that seed from SpongeBob with Pinhead Larry and Dirty Dan. Yeah, but uh if y'all haven't watched this show, definitely watch it and uh take it from someone, like I said, that just got done watching it. This is better watch in a short time span, like uh, a couple weeks, two or three weeks. Um, your schedule. Yeah, because the the reason why I say that is because there's so much story that's happening and so much um um things going on that uh you sometimes forget um about certain things that happen that are important uh to the plot um if it takes a longer period of time to watch it. So and this is definitely doable in, you know, uh three weeks, honestly. That, that puts you at like 20 episodes a week, which is a couple episodes a day or whatever, or just binge it, uh, like on the weekends or whatever. So it's easy. Dubbed is easy. Like the dubbed is like old school anime, you know, usually old school anime, all the dubs are usually pretty good. And this is no, you know, this is uh, a really great dub. So. Yeah, this is a show that I prefer to watch dubbed at this point. I've watched it both ways, but if I'm re watching a show for the fifth or sixth time, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read subtitles, you know? Yeah, I mean with well, some shows it's it's just um the voice it's just hard to watch bad. dubbed, you know, but yeah. this ain't one of them. All the characters uh in the dubbed world is just as good as the subbed, in my opinion. Um as I've watched I've played with both sides and like I said, dubbed is just as good, so it also helps that you're in like a like fantasy Germany esque kind of country in Amestria. So like they're blonde haired white guys. It makes sense for them to talk, you know, an English instead of <laughs> Japanese, you know, that's, that's I look at that like all the time. I'm like, oh, this makes more sense to watch dubbed. It fits the story better. True. Kind of like Vinland Saga, huh? I want to watch Vinland Saga with freaking like Nordic and just read subtitles that would be epic but they don't have i don't know if i can find that i could probably find like a scandinavian dub of it honestly yeah you could probably find something pretty close that sounds more like um viking uh, yeah the more uh brutal i guess yeah <laughs> yeah but uh yeah uh awesome. do you have another one i got one more you have two right yeah i just uh that's that's all the ones that i've finished so um, I just got a couple that I've just been watching, so. Okay. Do you want to do one of yours, then I'll do mine, then you can do one of yours? Or do you yeah, want me yeah. to just go, and then we'll bang them out? Well, since we're talking about older anime, I'll just uh, go ahead and say uh, I've been I've been trying to watch, in the background, Dragon Ball. Um, I know it's a, you know, really popular show, all that good stuff. Um, but I'm, like, almost done with the original Dragon Ball. I think I got, like, uh, 20 or 30 episodes left. And so far, like the dubbed is phenomenal as well. Like I said, usually the older, um, you know, top tier anime, the dubs are just as good as the subs, honestly. And it's it's been pretty funny. It's got pretty decent fights considering, you know, they're at low power levels right now. Um, but it's been more funny. It reminds me of like a OG Naruto. You know, it's got a lot of humor in it. Um so especially like sexual humor, I didn't really, uh, I didn't really realize that there was this much sexual humor in OG Dragon Ball. So 
it's it's two characters, man. It's Roshi being a horn dog, and it's Bulma showing her panties to get <laughs> Dragon Balls. I mean, Goku is just right right up there too, but his is just pat, ignorant, pat, pat. you know. His oh, is just this ignorant. Isn't... Dude, whenever I when I originally watched Dragon Ball, like you know, oh god, fucking twenty five <laughs> years ago, or whatever. When I was a kid, just watching him like pat people and be like, yeah. "Oh, you are a girl." Yeah, I'm like, bro, what am I watching right now? But... Oh my god, when he did that to like baby Chi Chi, I was crying, dude. <laughs> Her fit was so drippy in Dragon Ball. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, I've been really enjoying Dragon Ball. Um, you know, I do have a question though, since you have watched it before, and I I know I think I've asked you this before, but I figured I'd ask you again because I have no idea what you said. But once I get to it, should I watch Kai or no? I would watch Kai over the original. Um, the dub is better, and I mean I grew up watching Dragon Ball Z dub, so I'm not gonna go watch it in Japanese at this point. You know? Yeah. Um, but the dub is better and the pacing is substantially better. There's a lot of filler in the original Dragon Ball that just doesn't need to be there. And they shorten a lot of the fight scenes, which sounds like a bad thing. But like the five minutes it takes to blow up Namek should not take seven episodes. Yeah, so that's one of the things I had. It, it worried me, honestly, when I went into watching Dragon Ball because I know a lot of people talk about how... Um, how long the fights take for Dragon Ball, you know, the power ups and stuff. So I was hoping Kai would hold up um, as far as staying true to the story, but without all those long waits. Um, yeah, you lose 130 episodes, give or take. So I definitely advantageous, and they don't take away from the story at all. So, like, I would watch Kai. Okay, I got you. And that 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 takes over Dragon Ball Z, right? Yeah, so um when you finish Dragon Ball, there's essentially a small time skip. Between... And it goes straight to Kai, right? Dragon Ball Z Kai, right? It, it goes to Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, Kai is just basically an abridged version of Dragon Ball Z, but yeah. if I was going to watch one or the other in today, I'd watch Kai. I got you. I know, oh. I know you said you watched it and you watched the original as well, you know, so I figured, you know, you would know best. And I'm sure there's listeners out there that is in the same boat as me. So hell, it, this might help them, too, you know? So, yeah, I mean, like, they just take a lot out of it that didn't need to be there. It's kind of like when you watch, like, if they did, like, um, a Bleach Kai, it'd be half as long, <laughs> you know? And it's nice <laughs> to not have to watch all that filler. I got you. Yeah, I'm super excited for that. I'm super excited to finally... Uh, get all these Dragon Ball references that you and, you know, my buddy Matt uh, is always talking about, so. Definitely, man. Yeah, no, DBZ Kai is a treat, dude. It's it's fun, you know? It's like, you gotta look at it so, though, that it's it's a manga that was written in the, in the 90s and, like, 80s, so, like, it's not as plot-heavy. It's really just a lot of fighting, so. Hey, I mean, it is what it is. That's why I'm watching in the background, so. It's 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 taken, you know. It was taking the spot that Full Metal took, and then I put Dragon Ball on the back burner for Full Metal, and now the Full Metal is gone. You know, I can watch it now, and um, I'm also watching uh, the other show that you're fixing to talk about. If you want to go ahead and start talking about it, I guess definitely. So the last show that I've been watching, and this is the reason my list is so short, is because it's it's a long boy. <laughs> it's like 361 episodes and a final movie. So I'm watching Gintama right now and I'm 155 episodes in and this show has been an absolute delight. <laughs> uh, it's done by Studio Sunrise and where I am, they're still in a four point or a four three aspect ratio. Like the show's making fun of themselves right now. Like they're like, yeah, we're the only show left doing this shit. Like we're just too, the budget's not there for widescreen, so we can't do it yet. <laughs> i love but, i love when they do shit like that they talk about shit like that so oh my god i just watched an episode today where gin is literally reading the gintama manga during the episode <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no fourth the fourth wall is just non-existent in this show they know they're in an anime they talk about it all the time there's like full episodes where 
catching up to the uh, the manga they're like sitting there like there's one episode where they're staring it's just like the outside of the house they live in above uh one of the characters bars and they have like a 15 minute conversation of like how can we add more crap to this show to not catch up to the manga <laughs> how can we make more fillers (laughs) but the entire no they don't do filler that's like the best part there's only it's like 22 filler episodes in 360 and the first two episodes are filler yeah well i mean like they're they're literally talking about adding filler in as uh, anime characters you know what i mean (laughs) they are they are they are adding filler by talking about (laughs) adding filler essentially yeah which is so funny it's so funny and uh, this is easily going to be a top 10 show for me. Like, I got to like, I'm going to have to reevaluate my list when I'm done. Because... Well, there's, a, there's a reason, you know, that like Gintama is at the top of Mao too with Full Metal. So, yeah, I mean, they have like season part one and part two in the top. Like, they're there. Um, It's an incredible show. Um, The cast is absolutely hilarious. This is probably the funniest anime I've ever watched. Uh, the episodes are ridiculous and all over all over the place. And they do like they don't do arcs like you see in a normal anime. It's like every episode is essentially like its own story. But then they'll get to like these three, four episode mini arcs. With very serious plot points and it's very like pointed and like they like go into the Bushido of a samurai and all that kind of stuff, which is awesome. But I still think the best part for me is the anime references. Yeah, I think I'm about like 15, 20 episodes into it. I'm not uh I'm not watching it as heavily as Dan, but um it's definitely it's definitely one of my uh funny it, it, it makes me laugh every time I watch it, so. Oh my god, I was just watching one of the episodes and this is a really funny one. It's basically they're at like a um a food cart having drinks and they only show the person for the entire episode that runs the food cart and they have all the characters talking (laughs) and they're calling them by different names because this is a cart you go to complain about your life at so you've got like it's it's gin and then you have one of the members of the shinsengumi come up and he's complaining about his boss and then his boss walks up and they're like calling them by different names. Like they're calling uh, his boss Gory San because he he has like he's they call him a gorilla because he's got a hairy ass. <laughs> what the hell, bro? And then Shinpachi's sister shows up and it's just talking mad shit about Gin and Kagura and the people that Shinpachi works with because she's like they're ruining his life, all this stuff. And you're like, oh my god, this is getting kind of aggressive right here. And then you get to the end of the episode. And you actually see the characters, and it's just like really bad knockoffs of all the main characters, and it's none of them talking about each other the entire time. But you sit through 15 minutes thinking it's them talking about each other, but it's not the entire time. It was so funny. <laughs> and then, like, they all run by at the end, and you just see Gin walking out of a bar going, Who the fuck are those people? <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's just like, <laughs> so good, dude. I mean, I like in my opinion, Gintoki, Kagura, and Shimpachi might be the best anime trio of all time. Like, they're so good. And so there is basically like a two piece situation, huh? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> but you I don't see that. characters the entire time. You're just watching <laughs> this guy sitting there pouring drinks, making food. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's wild. And they have all the same voice actors. It was so funny. But yeah, no, like. During that episode, there's a scene where the gorilla, Gori San, the gorilla man, gets stabbed with a piece of green onion. And the character who's supposed <laughs> to be Gin is like, Oh my God, he must have enhancer type Nen. And at the top of the screen, it's just like, Nen is a power in Hunter Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> so they do a good job of explaining all the references they make. Because if you're not from Japan or you don't watch a lot of anime, you might not get them all. So they do a really good job explaining what they're referencing the entire time. Yeah, so one thing, one thing I really wish uh, Gintama had was a uh, long running dub. You know what I mean? That would be awesome for a show like this because you could just sit back and just you know watch whenever you wanted to and not have to like pay super close attention to it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I agree with that. Did you watch any of the dubbed or no? Yeah, that's that's what I that's what I've been watching actually. It's got like um like the John thirty Cena to forty references. dubs, so I think the John Cena references, dude. 
<laughs> but yeah. Uh, oh my god, it's so good. Like they I'll changed just... the references up too for the dub. <laughs> like I don't think they talked about John Cena <laughs> in fucking the Japanese version. <laughs> but yeah, I'm a. Uh... I'm, I'll be super sad when I have to switch over. Um, I I don't know when it's coming. I know there's only like, like I said, thirty or forty dubbed so available. Um, I don't even know if there's any more on like the pirate sites or not. So no, but. I think I think the Gintama dub got scrapped pretty quick. Yeah. But the sub is fantastic. Honestly, I think it's a better way to watch the show. Yeah, I mean, I'll be watching it so. I'm just, I just probably won't be as fast as you, but I'll, I'll get it done eventually. I've been wanting yeah. to, so. There, there's a reason I had to go start uh, two shows for this segment, because I had only <laughs> been watching Gintama. <laughs> Damn. We out here making Dan work, boys. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I guess, is, is that all we got, Dan? Watch Thank Gintama. You. That's all I got. Gintama and Full Metal Alchemist. Watch them, I guess. Awesome. So you got one more show or no? Uh, no, I think that's it, right? I think so. I think okay. that's it. Cool. I thought you had one more on there, but hey, if I did, I, I've I've looked over it. I don't I don't remember what I've talked about, bro. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. <laughs> we've talked we've talked about some banger shows. It's good enough. The people knows what we're doing right now. It's it's not a lot of free time, honestly. Uh, if you have to know, we're watching. We're doing so much stuff for the podcast. We're working all that stuff, but we're watching some pretty fire shit on the side, as you know. So definitely. Well, awesome. We hope you guys enjoy us. St- me and Tyler just in here kind of yeah. bullshitting about what we've been watching. So, uh, Bass, you want to get us into the next segment? Yeah, man. Let's get into it, my guy. Uh, so, next, guys, we have So You Want to Be a Vending Machine. Clearly, Reborn as a Vending Machine has surprised a couple of the DGens. Dan, not so much. However, it did get all three of us thinking about what inanimate objects we'd like to be reincarnated or reborn as. Because say what you want, man. Boxo's life is kind of lit. <laughs> have, have y'all is any is anybody except for me like watch more than the first three episodes? I got to like episode six, I think. Okay, no. okay. No, <laughs> see, Dan wasn't wasn't feeling it, bro. I wasn't vibing with it, man. It was really dumb. <laughs> I'm on episode eleven. Oh, okay. <laughs> Get yeah, this I man just haven't had time star. to keep watching it. <laughs> it is what it is, man. So, uh, Dan, you want to start us off? Sure. So, I'll get us going with my first one. Uh, so, I would like to be reborn as a big bath or big mouth <laughs> Billy Bass at a dive bar in the Midwest. That's so specific. Okay. So, if you guys don't know what big mouth, big mouth Billy, this is so hard to say, big mouth Billy Bass was. It was this really dumb toy that came out in like the 90s. And it was basically a singing fish that you hang on your wall. And when you press the button, its head would move back and forth and so does tail. And it would sing a very wonderful song of take me to the river on repeat. Can you, can you, can you this is sing a little bit for us? That's all I got for you, boys. That was that was that was me singing. It, it's not like it's like pipes. It's just like take me to the river. There we go. <laughs> but so this is your classic thing you'll see in a divey dumpy bar. And the reason I picked the Midwest is because they have the nicest people you will ever find out there. They apologize. They're incredibly nice, and I feel like they'd have some great fucking stories. Hunting, fishing, they're huge out in the Midwest. So I'd just be sitting up on the bar, behind the bar, listening to these two rednecks have a dick measuring contest about who got the bigger buck that <laughs> out that weekend while hunting. And it's like any story you have with hunting or fishing where it's like, I caught one this big and they hold their fa- hands about, you know, 18 inches apart. And yeah. then they tell that exact same story to the person on their other side. And it goes from like 18 to 22 inches. <laughs> after a couple of beers of course of course <laughs> gotta get bigger and bigger <laughs> but i just feel like you would hear such good stories there and you'd get to watch the highs and lows of drunk people at the bar playing pull tabs 
which is basically just legal bar gambling. Like, it'd be a dream come true for me, boys. If I had to, I don't want to be reborn as an inanimate object. Yeah. What is that? It's basically you get like a lottery card where you just pull stickers off and you might win money. Oh, okay. Okay. But oh, so like scratch a, offs. Yeah, like they're like scratch offs. Yeah. But there's no scratching. It's like a it's like a piece of like a paper cover you pull off. Okay. Oh, is that that Kenpo or shit or whatever the Kino? hell it is? Kino. Yeah, Kino. Don't get me going on Kino, boys. <laughs> that man loves his Kino. Yeah. I, dude, really? That's great. If you're sitting at a bar and you're just watching sports, you literally just circle numbers or fill in the little circles. Hand it to the lady, and then 10, 15 minutes later, you hand it to her, and you might have won some money. Like, that is my kind of gambling. There's zero effort. And, like, you don't pay any attention to it. <laughs> okay, okay. You, you just might win 20 bucks. Like, what's wrong with that? Fair enough, fair enough. But in the end, like all beautiful, beautiful things that run on batteries, I'll get to sit there saying, take me to the river until my batteries die and I fade into just forgotten about despair at the back of this bar. And that would be my <laughs> life. That That's what happened to every Big Mouth Billy Bass I've ever seen. Dude, you go. I wanted to go buy one because I think they're hilarious. And they're like hundreds of dollars now. What? <laughs> like for a legit one. There's knockoffs. Oh, okay. But like okay. you need the original, you know? Got you. Got you. Um, yeah. My, uh neighbor used to have one and he left that thing on for maybe a week before he was tired of it so you might live a very short life in, in this instance maybe a long life who knows i'm behind a bar man bar, bartenders don't want to hear that somebody would probably put baddies in him those things are fucking annoying <laughs> but they're funny <laughs> I have, they, they are funny i look i'm i'm 99 certain we had one when i was a uh, young kid so <laughs> I wanted one so bad. I used to be like a sucker for the like the commercial ads, you know, nineteen ninety nine, you get two at the end of the commercial. And I think they had the Billy Bass on on for once and I was like, Yeah, oh, I need that. I, I need feel that. like they definitely did. And like that was the only one that would like apply to a kid. Like, I don't need a cup that like you could flip over and it doesn't spill. I don't need that. I want to <laughs> dance sing and fish. Dude, I used to want all that shit. I, it was just some some great marketing for young bass. You know what's crazy? A what's lot up? of those things you see on infomercials were actually developed for people with disabilities. Mm. And then they bring them to market and they go, oh, people will buy these. It, yeah. Okay. All right. Just, that, I did not know that. That's, that's yeah. very interesting. Well, it's like you see, it's like people are like, oh, I'm shaking. I can't hold this cup. And it's like, oh, that's for somebody with Parkinson's. True. 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 <laughs> Oh, because it won't spill, right? Yeah. Yeah, Ooh, okay. yeah. So they develop it for a purpose, and then they sell it to suckers like bats for watching TV at 2 in the morning, stealing them with their mama's credit card out <laughs> you of get, the You get two for nineteen ninety nine. It's a deal. <laughs> I don't even care what it is. I just want to save the money. If you buy three, bro, you get free shipping. What do you mean? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Bass had all those old CD CD sets they would sell on TV. He had the power and ballads. I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I used to wake up to those commercials at like three in the morning. I'm so fucking couch. loud. So yeah, fucking dude. Loud. That and the George Lopez theme song. <laughs> Damn. That's, uh, that's I was loading. always happy to wake up for that one. Yeah. But Tyler, you want to get us into yours? <laughs> yeah. Um, so the first one I'm going to pick is um, no other than uh, Truck Coon. You know, <laughs> the murderer. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, I mean, <laughs> Tyler is sitting here like, I just got isekai I'm going to isekai everybody. <laughs> uh, Matt, you know, how many, how many, well, there's none. There's literally, is there any that uh, you get reincarnated as a vehicle? You are like, the isekai expert. You, that's what you got to dig. Yeah, no, you're supposed to tell us. us. You're supposed I'm to really, tell us. Like, I don't know. I don't know of one. So imagine like this this is a shit that puts people in isekais imagine if you was you know you went to an isekai as a vehicle you know and uh the crazy thing is if we're if we're playing off a of boxo's logic you know i can be any vehicle if i knew enough you know if i knew enough about it right that's true yeah i yeah that, that's possible so, i fuck with that you know, he's he's got a huge body count off the bat. You know, he's deadly. 
And uh, why you want to be a killer? <laughs> I'm, I, I, I'm not <laughs> saying I'm a killer. I'm just saying that I have potential to protect myself and others. You know. <laughs> I think I found what you're Yo, looking he for. He wants to murder, bro. <laughs> so I typed in Isekai Reborn as a truck, and there is an ebook on Amazon called The Time I Got Reincarnated as a Truck That's Also a Death God. Okay. Tyler, the Death God has a, a great read to it, actually. <laughs> they know what they're talking about. <laughs> you, can, you can check it out for 99 cents. Well, Honestly, that means it might be worth it. Probably trash. Hey, it's oh, 99 guaranteed. cents. You can't, you can't even buy a fucking McChicken for 99 cents now. <laughs> you can't buy anything for 99 cents. Dude, you go to the no. dollar store, it's more than that. It's a dollar five, ain't it? <laughs> Sad times but, we living in, boys. But, uh, yeah, so that's that's my choice. Um, You know, it it wouldn't even need no fuel. You know, in my opinion, it could run off the power of friendship. I mean, that's what, that's what you know, You're anime is. You're murdering people. How are you getting the power of friendship, bro? Not my friends. I, I thought he was going to say the, you know, the the power of bloodlust. Uh, for, I mean, they're, they're, I can probably, so if, if I transform into like, you know, a tank or something, I don't know, something mm -hmm. that's more capable of, you know, being offensive, um, you know, th then my fuel could probably change honestly okay so so i got a question for you if you had to pick one vehicle to be for the for the entire time you're reborn what would what kind of vehicle would you pick what kind Ooh. of truck coon do you want to be mm. <laughs> you, you want to like specific yeah. built for tough yeah i'm sure you know some car you ain't gotta be specific but a type of vehicle and if you like, if you want to tell us you know a fucking ford ranger that'd be a great choice but you you, you do what you do you know, it makes sense. It makes sense to be a truck, a four-wheel drive truck at that. You know, kind of maybe got a little lift going on it. Because, you know, that can go almost anywhere, you know. I uh, can just feel the Kentucky in my ears <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. He's going to take his horn instead of just having a honk. It's just going to go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not uh, that's not bad that's that wouldn't be bad i support that i mean you know th this is a great a great uh choice i think um it's i mean it can be a very good support uh support option uh you know you can have if you got a lot of people going on you can have a van you know if you need to carry something you can have uh, a truck or even a bigger truck or, you know, you, I can even go to like a, a four wheeler or a motorcycle or something, you know, it, oh, it's you a, can change. Yeah. That, I mean, Boxo can. That's true. OK, so, I'm just imagining Tyler getting reincarnated into a dungeon like our boy Boxo did in just like a scene out of Mad Max with all of these people in his bed with just like freaking going and rampaging on these little toad goblin things they were fighting. With just heavy metal music come blaring out the speakers. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so I, I mean, I don't know if I would be able to drive. I'm sure I could like drive myself, but if not, you know, I'll just have to find like a lamb, you know, a lamus, llamas, uh, to help me out. Be it's my. Like, I duo. want. I want to be a truck, and I want a big titty, one hundred and ten pounds, soaking wet lady to drive me around. <laughs> that's I mean, I, I feel like yeah, that, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <Shit. laughs> is that part of the segment? Like, I didn't say that part. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, I mean, there, there's really no negatives to this shit. Uh, you know, if I get into any. Uh, like powers i could have smoke screens you know easily i could you know probably generate electricity you know uh this probably, is a, this is what a if fucking, you run out of gas bro that's a negative you, i don't have need, gas what if you need an oil change i run off the power of friendship oh my god not the op truck <laughs> yeah that's what i said power <laughs> of friendship okay okay <laughs> all right <laughs> But yeah, that's uh, that would be my choice. That's that's pretty OP, I think, and it's a nice pick, honestly.
Damn, it, y'all making it, my son, my shit sound lame. I'm ashamed. If I could have <laughs> the power of friendship fix a flat tire, that'd be pretty lit. I mean, it, it, with with you know boxos, you don't understand. Boxo is OP, bro. That dude can change into anything and everything. Vending machine, he he can change into a washing machine, bro. Fucking Tyler's gonna be out here rolling coal. I guess there are washing machine. Wait, a washing machine yeah. and a damn vending machine. The laundry mat. It takes coins, man. So it's basically a vending machine, right? Oh shit! You're buying services. Oh shit! Box <laughs> out here wilding, boy. Okay, okay. Awesome, Bass. You want to get to yours before we go on any more truckoon rants? <laughs> yeah, let's do it, man. Uh, I, I have to admit, at this first round, mine is by far the lamest, but I really like it anyway. Uh, I chose a camera, bro. I just got into like photography the last couple of weeks. Um, I've been going to like many places I wouldn't normally go to take pictures, and I think that'd be a cool to be a camera. Like you, if you get with somebody at least moderately adventurous, you get to go look at a bunch of cool shit. Right, there you go. Uh, my camera you know. is on a stand and uh, takes videos of my beautiful face with my stuff in the background. So don't be reborn as mine. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But yeah, most most photographers' cameras get to see very cool things, whether it's nice buildings, uh, you know, pictures of mountains, being on top of a mountain, going to different cities, be a pretty cool journey, man. I, th- I think so. And also, like, you don't have to really worry about. Um, being broken, most photographers take really fucking good care of their cameras. You can't even really get dust on them, so you're gonna be clean at, at the very least. You're gonna be clean. <laughs> I don't know how Tell's gonna clean himself, but you know he might just want to be dirty. Who knows? <clears throat> drive through some puddles. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like I mean, what you do could possibly get seen by a bunch of people, but there is a couple of cons. Um, the biggest one I think is you probably going to spend like 95% of your life in a fucking camera bag. Yeah. true. Uh, so I, I need to ask a question, you know, can I make the lens like other people? Is that a thing? Can I make talkative lenses so we can hang out in the, in the camera bag or am I just in there by myself, boys? I'm just in there by yourself. Oh, that's a sad life. I don't, that's I a don't. Sad life. I mean, I mean, you can understand like, what's going on around you. I'm sure. You yeah, know? I'm sure. It's just but. dark and he's hearing muffled voices. <laughs> <laughs> Getting put on the plane. Each You're but. forgetting a lot of good demographics for being a Cameron, though. You could belong to a vlogger. That's you'd be saying. taking videos. Yeah, so you like, could, you're you not could. even just taking photos. You're like out there recording live and catching that. And you could even potentially be a uh, a camera used in a certain industry. Oh, no, you bugging. And see some shit. Oh no, you're you're absolutely bugging now. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was only a matter of time. Yeah, it had to be coming. It had to be coming. But yeah, I think I think you'd really go on some awesome journeys though. Uh, like you, you're saying, Dan. Can you change into a GoPro? Yeah, well, Oh, I can change into different co- types of cameras too, I, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's if, wide open then, yeah. I can change into things you saw in infomercials in the nineties. That's lit. <laughs> I mean, but GoPro that'd be pretty exhilarating. You know what I'm saying? You go skiing, do all kinds of like crazy bullshit. You're scuba diving. You're you know jumping out of planes. You're skiing. You're rock climbing. You're indestructible, dude. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. So I mean, it's solid. It's not quite you know truck coon or anything, but yeah, it was pretty good. You're like the coolest gift you can get, like a 12 year old who's into biking or something, and then you can go live in a closet for hundreds of years. <laughs> Not hundreds, you know. Me, me and Tyler could even hang out. They could like mount me. I could be a dash cam. Yeah, me oh. and Bass could like go on trips together with our with my beautiful um companion. Yeah, I'd be like the devil on his shoulder till they run him up over. And then you just gotta mount me <laughs> in the back of the truck. <laughs> yeah, the, this is the all coming glass. together. Yes, yes, that'd be one hell of a podcast, boys. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm glad our first uh first picks really come together pretty nice. So Yes, yes. <laughs> well, my second pick's about to turn it up. It's about to crank up the aggression. Let's, I would let's like, hear it, bro. I would like to be reborn as an Apache helicopter. Okay. Bro, and that's you, like, you want to be a literal angel of death? <laughs> yes, sir. Imagine I was talking about 
Tyler being uh, <laughs> murderer. Oh, God damn. Imagine if Lamis just walked up and found an Apache helicopter and you heard my one phrase, get in the chopper. <laughs> and then we just flew around murking fucking little toad goblins on repeat. Oh, you're going to have oh, we'd, we'd beat the whole dungeon in like two days, dude. It'd be a wrap. <laughs> You're gonna have the voice of Arnold as uh, you're you gonna yeah, be able to talk, yeah. bro. <laughs> <laughs> Come with me if you want to live. <laughs> oh shit! Well, um, yeah, okay. C- um, could I have picked a Terminator? Are those technically inanimate objects? No, those those, those have uh, uh, artificial intelligence. Those are not inanimate. Damn, that would have been lit. <laughs> nah, you. Why? Why everybody want to kill stuff today? Like, I just want to. I just want to kill Sarah Connor. I guess. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> God Damn. Boys. Okay. I got nothing else, boys. It'd be fucking cool. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, like, I can't. I can't lie. I can't lie. That's pretty fucking awesome. But I can see some pretty serious drawbacks. Uh, do you? Do you have helicopter dreams or helicopter nightmares? I'm an amateur, dude. I'm just chilling. Oh, okay. Oh, no, okay. wait. You're in it, bro. You're not in anime like, no more. I, yeah. I'm just imagining a helicopter that looks like one of the characters in Thomas the Tank Engine. No, oh, no. It's just my big ass shit eating grin on the front of it. <laughs> What's that fin song they always play in the old uh, Vietnam movies? I don't know, uh, but that would be fucking terrifying. Just like you smiling. Down, down. Now, 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 now. <laughs> I'm gonna just, look it up. I need that in the background the whole damn time. Dan just smiling, mowing people down on the front. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Fortunate as, as, son. Yeah, as as CCR is playing, bro. <laughs> I talk like Arnold. I got CCR playing, and I am just mowing down goblins, boys. It'd be a good life. Oh, goblins. Okay. Is that what oh, you want to call them now? We're in another world, dude. <laughs> I'm hopefully going to get found by some good people. Imagine if I got found by the big baddie. It'd be game over. <laughs> I don't think it matters if you're an Apache helicopter. Or you're, you're the bad people. What do you mean? <laughs> Whoa. If you're protecting your village from the toad goblins, you know, that's about all I remember from Reborn as a Vending Machine. I, I don't I don't know, bro. I Imagine... If I don't. I don't Ki- see it at Apache helicopter as a defense weapon. Imagine if Kirito and Sword Art Online had an Apache helicopter, they would have cleared the dungeon so fast and got back to the real world in about two weeks, dude. It would have been a wrap. <laughs> that so? guild would have been nuts. <laughs> but could an Apache helicopter fit through the doors? We're just blowing a door big enough for me to shoot through, dude. It's all good. I got missiles on lock. You build a section with a helipad. What is your Damn. helicopter? <laughs> what is your helicopter running off of? Bloodlust. Fuck friendship. Let's go. <laughs> so he's he's a certified death machine, basically. Okay. That's what an Apache helicopter is, dude. Yeah. I am basically just gonna be Connor, just going gat 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 the entire time. What are you What are you gonna do when there's no more war and you have to keep killing? To stay Making alive. It, I'll fade oh, off yeah, you. the distance, dude. I had a good life. Oh, you're just okay with <laughs> dying. <laughs> At this I'll rate. get reborn as something else eventually, dude. It's all good. Maybe I'll go be a Billy Bass at a Midwestern bar after that. You know, whatever. <laughs> Stripper Poe, you know, we talked about it before. So. I do not want a bunch of middle-aged nastiness all over me, bro. Come on. Man, maybe I like Magic City, though. Like Magic City would be tight <laughs> in Atlanta. Like, I mean, that's that's like A plus S tier stripper game right there. That ain't too you, bad. You got to work your way up to the big leagues, boys. You got to start somewhere, and it's going to be Lamplighters two down the street from my house. And that Ugh. place is way too busy on a Tuesday afternoon at one thirty. See, my theory about that place is it's got to have some great bar food. <laughs> it's probably got good wings. I'm not going, but but I, l- let's get back to the segment, boys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, what is your second uh, reborn? My, my second um, uh, isekai is a little bit milder than my first one, but it's a paintbrush, and you know uh-huh. it, it can. We we seen it in multiple anime 
to, you know, I can have the ability, like, to switch colors, you know, ability to paint things on my own and all that good stuff, but my drawings can come to life. So you want like, to belong to a trader named Conjuro? <laughs> Conjuro? No, that's, that's immediately that's what I thought of. That's not the only person that does shit like that. Sai from Naruto does that. You got somebody in Black Clover that does that. The young kid, you know? The young child. Do you remember yeah, that? Do you remember that young boy from that anime who finds a paintbrush and he uses it and the power of friendship to win the win the game? Yes. Yes, I do. Tyler gonna smack the shit at you. You see the look on his face? Is that is that a legit anime? Probably, dude. I just found one about a person who was reborn as a truck, <laughs> truck of death. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think this would be pretty cool because it would, um, you know, it would allow me to, uh, be able to be used by you know people like, uh, you know, Bob Bob Ross, you know, anybody can use me as a paintbrush, and I would be able to, you know, see all these crazy good art you know art pieces but then i could also do my own stuff and i could make i could choose what i would want to come to to become real you know so i think that would be really trees. fun so are you the person that like traps bob East, bob in his own isekai <laughs> <laughs> he's Bob's Maybe. weapon in the yeah. Bob Ross he's the guy I really yeah, want to exist. Ooh, okay 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 it's maybe maybe Bob Ross of death yeah <laughs> maybe maybe me and, me and Bob Ross like just you know try to try to take over a world you know world peace oh yeah world peace a happy little world Bob does not have an ounce of violence inside of him dude that's, that's what cool Tyler's because, for. Yeah, that's what I'm for. <laughs> <laughs> he draws. He draws with me by day, and then at night time, oh boy, it's, the trees it's time. come to life. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's another world. <laughs> Just picture a paintbrush with a fucking ski mask on. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna get got? <laughs> paintbrush just draws a blicky in arms. <laughs> All right. Well, boys, yeah. my. You got anything else for no, us? No, no, no. Okay, it. okay. Uh, well, let's, uh, we'll get to mine. Mine is a container ship, um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> bro. Like it's it's so chill. Like that would be so chill. Um, <clears throat> I, I think I might just want to go like sail the seas just because of One Piece. But I actually think this would be pretty cool. Um, assuming that there are other inanimate objects to talk to, or if I could transform into any like a uh, seafaring vessel, would be pretty pretty tight. I like think you could, you know, like a jet ski. Yeah, I've never yeah. seen somebody frown on a jet ski, dude. I've never seen anybody frown as a jet ski. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> fantastic <laughs> life, right there. Um, but yeah, like any kind of ship would be pretty cool. But um, I, I pick container ship as like the base form because that's a pretty safe job. Um, I actually looked this up because I was I was curious at the point, but only zero point zero five four percent of container ships. Uh, capsize or sink every year so very very safe i'm probably gonna live a nice long life and container ships stay on the seas for a very very long time um <clears throat> being able to travel anywhere in the world depending on where the crew needs to go keeping the crew safe would be pretty sick and then like seeing all these really like cool like port towns would be fucking phenomenal like you get to go to like, all of like the largest cities in the world are usually on large rivers or or uh bound by the ocean so literally traveling the world man or like a like a mega yacht that travels the coast and shit like that i'd rather be a mega yacht with a bunch of babes on top of me than a container ship can you see the babes what. like can you see the babes you're like a big ass boat i feel like so based on you know my ideas of how this would happen your eyes would just be the um windscreen for the yeah. command deck okay 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 you know true and they're usually true, on true. the back of the boat right so they gotta be on the front of the boat for us to see. No, Man, I mean, yeah, like the, anyway. the driver and shit's usually at the back, and everybody yeah, else the, is at the front, right? Yeah, so I'd be looking forward. Yeah, yeah. Well, it doesn't matter front, middle, <laughs> as long as they're in front of me. He's just like, I just, I'm actually <laughs> gonna put a hot tub in the front of the boat. Boom. There you go. There you go. Problem solved. But yeah, no, I think one. I love 
getting on different kinds of boats. But yeah, being a fucking boat or a ship, sick as fuck, bro. Bro, if if we're taking Boxo for example, he actually is, uh, he actually upgrades. Um, um, he uses points to upgrade, and he's able to see all around him. So that is yeah. true. Yeah, I did remember so. seeing that. Yeah, so you wouldn't be fixated on a single, you know, uh, POV. Um, it would be true. You know, and, you could upgrade. So, and most yachts have like a camera and security system in them, so I could probably use those for vision too. No creepy yeah, I mean, shit, Dan. But yeah, <laughs> I, they, don't put, they don't put cameras in the cabins, buddy. No, they don't. They don't. But it, you know, it can be part of the fun a little bit. Rock the boat a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it'd be fun. Um, going back to my container ship vibes, though, uh, you know, you wouldn't ever want to end up like the uh, the Ever Given, the ship that blocked the Suez Canal in like 2021. You know, all the other boats seeing you on, on TV for fucking up. Yeah, you know, it's got to be mad embarrassing. You know, everybody making fun of you at the port. Not a good look. Not a good look. But other oh, than that, you just really guess, vibing. You're a fucking ship. Finally decided to show up, Mister the 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 large bass. You fucking dunce. No, nah, they'd be roasting your ass, boy. <laughs> they'd be roasting you heavy, dude. Yeah. That, that's like, imagine like the ship's like r- directly behind you, too. It's like the world's worst traffic jam. Well, Get as the a, fuck out of the way. As a ship, as a, as a ship is the guy, mm-hmm. I feel like you could just change into a that's smaller true. form. And that's just true. drop everything. Oh, into the shit. Ocean. Yeah, it is like shit. People need their shit. And there's people on that bitch, too. Well, I mean, you know, there's a lot of people in that bitch. Sometimes certain s- s- situations calls for, uh, you know, we, casualties. So, damn, ain't nobody getting their Amazon deliveries on time. That's crazy. <laughs> I would fuck so hard with my crew if I was a smaller ship. Like, imagine everybody goes to bed and you just transform from like a little like sailboat to a fucking Viking battleship. Oh. <laughs> they wake up and that's what they find. <laughs> Oh man, it'd be fun I'm, though. I think I'd just be a, such a fun life, though. I feel like I feel like your crew would have to know uh, that you are what you are, you know. So, oh yeah, it it'd still be fun as fuck to prank them though. Yeah, like blow the horn. <laughs> I am the captain <laughs> what now. You? Is the only thing he can say through his speakers. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah. No, that'd be a good life. That'd be a good life. Well, awesome, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed those couple segments. Hop in the Discord. Let us know what you'd like to be reborn in if you had to become reborn as an inanimate object. Linktree.com slash AnimeDGens, and we'll catch you guys next Tuesday for the weekly rundown. Peace. Bye. Bye.